Hello everyone, and in today's video, I'm going to talk about the flight controller that we're designing in-house. So in this boxy drone quadcopter diagram, which I had uh, spoken about in an earlier video, we have a flight controller and we also have a computer vision AI processor. So the, our quadcopter will be equipped with two processors, uh, two computational, one will be a microcontroller and one will be a processor. And this flight controller, we wanted to handle the four motors in terms of uh, controlling the brushless DC motor, which is in some, it's called the electronic speed controller. And we just want one processor to handle all the four motor in terms of how it needs to spin, which is a pretty complicated algorithm. We'll talk about that in a later video. And we also wanted to have the capability of uh, processing some flight dynamics in terms of, you know, taking all the sense of fusion Taking the sensor, taking the readings from the sensor, applying a sensor fusion algorithm, and applying a control algorithm so that it can make the make the drone more stable. It could be a PID controller, it could be a model predictive controller, but the goal is that we wanted a processor that can do a lot of computation. So what we've selected is the NXP KV5X, which is the Kinetis series, and. Uh, it's got 240 megahertz. It's a motor control and power conversion. It's got Ethernet, MCU, uh, and it's an and it's an ARM Cortex M7, which basically means it's got some computation, pretty high computational capabilities. Now, one of the reasons why we have selected this particular microcontroller is the ability of it having it has 144 pins, <clears throat> but more than anything else, is we were looking at a processor that has uh, a lot of pulse width modulation uh, pins. Because when you're controlling brushless DC motor, you'll have an edge bridge uh, that you need to control. So, the, and each motor would have six edge bridge, and as a result, you would need six fours into twenty-four PWMs. At you know, I mean, you can you can minimize that by uh, using some of the general purpose input/output pins, but you'll at least need twelve uh, pulse pulse with modulation modulation, and this has a lot of pulse with modulation pins, which is awesome. It has a uh, 200 E flex ease, I believe is um, extended flexible pulse width modulator, which has uh, pulse width modulation basically, you know, you can control it through different timing and edge sequence and stuff. So you have capabilities of triggering the pulse width modulation based on different timing sequences and stuff. So it's pretty uh, advanced in that sense. And it's also a pretty capable processor. So if you look at the block diagram, it's got 144 pins, it's got general purpose input output pins, it's got you know two two into twelve channel uh, pulse width modulator, it's got flex timers, um, and and you generally need a timer in order to control the pulse width modulator. It's got quad encoder and different other ways of uh, controlling um, the timers. <clears throat> it's got an analog uh, to digital converter, digital to analog converter, uh, and it's got some security um, capabilities. All right, so let's go about and design uh, a breadboard or a breakout board for this particular processor. So what I've done over here, I'm just gonna open my PDF file, is I've gone and designed this particular board. And my goal is to make the board very simple. I don't wanna add too much capabilities or too much functionality. Because when you go to the NXP's website, which is over here, they do have some development boards. And they do have the KV series quad motor control design, which, I, which is basically what I'm trying to model. But the goal over here is that they have, um, they have all these sophisticated breakout boards, boards, and I don't need that. I just want to basically test the capability of this chip. So my goal over here right now is to make a breakout board that literally has got the most least amount of components, and it's got just enough components so that I can test the breakout board and start testing my algorithms. I want to start basically using MATLAB or other capa other software so that I can do software in the loop testing or hardware in the loop testing. And that's really my only goal over here. So how do we design a breakout board with the minimum and the least amount of components? All right. So what I have over here is a power input. So I want to basically power the processor or the, the MCU in this particular case with five volts or three volts. And when it lights up, um, when the power is uh, sent to this voltage regulator, it should light up. So that's just a power power um, input with with a voltage regulator. Then what we have is the actual processor, which has got 144 pins. Uh, you have a couple of decoupling capacitors, and you have a clock. Here, the clock that I have over here. Let me just bring this up a little bit. So what I have over here is a it's an eight megahertz of crystal oscillator. Now I now I did mention that this is 
got you know it's got a capability of I think 254 megahertz, uh, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, it's got 240 megahertz capability. So what I have over here is a clock that's eight megahertz, and we'll have to do some little bit of adjustments in order to make everything work properly. So we'll get into the code shortly. So the breakout board is literally this: few couple of decoupling capacitors put into every VDD pin. So each one of these capacitors will be will be mounted close to the close to each of these pins. There are around eight or nine of these these pins that needs a decoupling capacitor, and each one of them will be connected to them. Um, then you have the ground, and then you have buses for basically, you know, um, accessing the pins. What I have over here is this the second sheet is um, is basically a is the same thing, but it's just a breakout pin. So just a different size um, on the PCB, so that I can basically extrapolate uh, or extract the the pins into a little bigger size hole, so that I can use them. So that's I'll show you a little bit about what this particular block diagram does. And here we have the things where we can program the board. So we have JTAG, uh, we have SWD or JTAG, uh, the, the 10 pin header, we have the uh, the 20 pin header, and we have the 10 pin, um, which is a little different version of the um, SWD or the JTAG um, connector. Now, according to some documents, when you're designing the, with the KV5X, um, you need to basically make sure that the JTAG TMS has uh, got a pull-up resistor of 10K, the reset B is also got a 10K resistor, and uh, with coupled with a 0 0.1 nanometer capacitor, and the NMIB is also pulled up at 10K. This is so that it's uh, not floating, and because if it's floating, it can trigger some signals, especially so the reset signal, so you don't want it to reset arbitrarily, so that's the reason why we're by default, putting it up at a logic level, say high, so that um, it's not uh, floating. The breakout board is very straightforward. I've got the pin, the power input deliveries over here, and these are all the JTAG inputs. That's really it. And then the second diagram, uh, block diagram, where it's got all the same number of pins as the as the 144, uh, <clears throat> does the NXP KV5X. All I've done is basically try to uh, break out these pins into a, a small little hole over here. That's how it looks. This is the ground plane. This is the power plane, so we're distributing the power um, across the whole board. And then again, this is the bottom layer, which is the ground plane, uh, and more or less the ground plane. And this is how the board should look like. So what we have here is the simplest board that we can ever make is really what my aim is. You have the processor, you have the clock, you have some filtering capacitors. The filtering capacitor is placed beneath the board. And then you have the JTAG pins. And then you have the power delivery unit. That's really what I wanted to get from this. Um, so that I can prototype quickly if something is wrong or if I want to test something, I can make something, I can I can do it quickly. Uh, you know, I don't want to put in all the bells and whistles in this one board when I'm actually just trying to use a, make a board so that I can test the algorithms very quickly. And I've got the pins so that if I want to test something, I can uh, you know connect a connect a wire and then start testing some signals. So let's get started into uh, uh, testing this. So I have already developed the board. I've printed the fab printed and fabricated the board. This is the KV5X. I have not connected the power system to the board yet because I'm powering it through the uh, JTAG connector, which is program which can program this board, which is an NXP product. Now uh, allows me to uh, power an external board. Uh, from this board. Uh, this is the JTAG pin, and then we have a clock, which is eight megahertz, a couple of capacitors beneath the board, uh, and that's it. So let's start to program it. Um, so one of the things that I've done, let me open MCU Expresso. So if you wanna start programming on this board, now because I'm using the eight megahertz clock crystal, we gotta make some setting, we gotta make change some settings to, uh, align the whole system to work properly. All right, so once you open the MCU Expresso, you can go to import SDK examples. You might have to download it based on whether you have installed the config tools or not. You can select whichever breakout board you want. Um, the goal over here is to extract the examples so that you can compile and get started quickly. Though we are not using this development board, a lot of the settings has already been configured and based on which pin is connected to when you, you import the examples, you know which pin is connected to what, you can you know, basically probe that, that particular pin. Uh, there is no development board for the MKV56, though that's the processor we're using. 
or the MCU that we're using. The MKV58 has a couple of development boards. They're very similar. They just they have a few differences. Uh, I think in temperature or something of uh, that sort, um, which shouldn't make it make any difference. So you select the development board you want. I like the Tower 58, and I click Next. And then you you can choose the demo apps. There's the LED Blinky, Hello World, um, Digital to Analog, Analog to Digital, there's the eCompass. Um, you also have all the drivers, which is one thing that I really like, is when the manufacturer provides you with all of the code necessary for you to utilize the processor. Imagine you're sitting down and writing your own general purpose input output function or uh, UART. This is gonna be very tedious. Um, it's the hardware, it's very specific to the hardware. You change the processor and again, you, it's very, it's, it, this should be done by the manufacturer. And I'm very happy that NXP has actually done this for us. So what I've done over here is I'm gonna select LED Blinky because our goal over here is to, uh, because we're using our own clock or oscillator and we're dev using our own development board, the goal is to try to uh, sync everything together, making sure the clock works properly. So that's what we're trying to do over here. And the LED Blinky is, uh, is a simple, program which basically makes the LED go uh, on and off. Now we don't have an LED attached to the board but we can see which pin is triggering the LED and we can see whether it works uh, uh, periodically. Since I've already imported this, so you can, as you can see, I already have this uh, project name. Um, you can go around, you know, rename it and then click next uh, and then it'll install all the folder, all the necessary files for you to function with the LED Blinky. Since I've already gone and done it, I'm not going to install it again, but this is what it would look like. So once you get the code, it'll automatically set all the code. You can start to build it to see if everything compiles properly. And once everything is compiled, it may not work because you have a different clock compared to what the development board is. The development board has a clock of 50 megahertz. The one that I've attached is an eight, eight megahertz clock. So I need to make some changes to, to the clock. And you can do that through the NXP config file over here. So you can, this is another program that NXP allows you to download. And it tells you how you can configure the parameters for the clock which is a pretty amazing software in my opinion, because if you want to really understand what's going on with the phase lock, you know, whether you have an external oscillator and you got uh, all these parameters that you want to set so that the clock works properly, then this tool really helps you. And it's a great tool because um, there are different settings in the way you can, what kind of clock circuit you want to activate. And since we have an external clock, uh, we want to engage the phase lock loop, engage the external, so that's the settings that we want to trigger and it'll tell you how you want to set the parameters. And it also gives you the high level diagram of uh, how this works. So it tells you that you got an oscillator of eight megahertz, and then when it's set to the you know, phase lock loop, you're multiplying it by 36 so that you can get 288 megahertz. And if you divide it by two, you're getting 144 megahertz. And you've already set some of these parameters and saying, okay, I want this per day, I want the system clock to operate at 144 megahertz. I want the peripheral clocks to operate at 72 megahertz. Uh, the flex bus at 48 megahertz and the flask uh, and the flash clock at 24 megahertz. Like you set these parameters and it'll automatically design, give you the numbers and you take those numbers and you basically put them into the file over here. Because the goal over here is that after every one second you want the LED to toggle and um, if the clock is not triggered or it's not aligned properly, if it's not set properly, then it will not, it'll not blink after every one second. It might blink after some other time. So you want to you know, calibrate your clock based on the oscillator that you've selected so that uh, everything is calibrated. So you can go to the board and click clock config.c. You would have got all those parameters from that other tool, which uh, and you can download directly from the NXP website and you can play around with it, uh, play with some, some settings. And I've already gone about and uh, set, the, set, set all the parameters out here. So as you can see, I had to overwrite some of the parameters once I installed the tower LED, uh, tower um, example. So I had to change the voltage divider, the pre-divider, um, 
FCR divider, you know, you're going to using an 8 megahertz oscillator. So the original was 40 megahertz, um, 48 megahertz, which is around 50 megahertz. Here we're using an 8 megahertz, change some capacitor settings, and that's about it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build this product project, which I've already built. So make these changes. Um, and you can, as I mentioned, you can look at the config file to um, config tool, to MCU config tool to get a better understanding of how we, what those changes need, mean. And the function over here, what it does is uh, there's a cystic handler, which uh, you set some, you know, the goal over here is to make the LED blink one second on, one second off, one second on, one second off. So we set the original thing to thousand so, and you're saying that after we, if it counts to 1000, it should be one millisecond. So we have a delay tick and we're gonna, we're gonna toggle the GPIO port from on, off, on, off, on, off. So we're setting it as an output, we're setting it to be high or setting it to be low, and we switch every one second. And then you, and every one second, you will have the cystic config which will trigger an interrupt. And that interrupt will keep counting to, to zero. And once it counts to zero, it'll toggle to the next state and then we also reset the counter. That's really what's happening in this program. Uh, it's pretty straightforward. All right, so let's download to the board. So all I've done over here is uh, you can click on target, this uh, processor looking icon. I'm using the JLink LPC Link 2. You can buy this for around 10 to $15. It's uh, an inexpensive tool, tool to program any of the NXP boards. Um, and it works with almost all types of boards. There are a few exceptions, but for the most part, it works even with my LPC 1769. Now with the Kinetics KV5X, it's a beautiful uh, handy tool in order to program the board. So we're gonna use the SWD setting. We've already compiled the code and we're just gonna click run. And now it's gonna be programmed into the development board. I mean, I love the efficiency, the speed at which you can just develop, you know, your own hardware and then test the software um, just by creating these small little tools and you're not forcing yourself to use, um, you know, conventional uh, tools that your, the manufacturer wants you to use in terms of, you know, these big development boards that you don't even need to use half the functionality and you just want something minimum. And that's what really what we, that, that that's really the objective over here. All right, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put my logic analyzer and we're gonna test the signal. So I'm gonna connect the blue logic, blue blue signal over here. So what we have over here is it's connected to um, this particular pin is connected to a PE a nine or PE eleven, uh, and it's based on you. You will have to go to the uh, you will have to go to this particular board, uh, download the documents, and see which which connection is the LED connected to, or which pin the LED is connected to. Now I've already gone out and done that. So from here, let me have a look. Uh, so you can go to the, the website, download the PDF, and we'll see which pin this is connected to. So this is the KVR58, and we're trying to use the user's LED part over here. Uh, and let's see where this LED is connected to. And you can also get, when I'm, when I'm designing these block, designing my own development board, I basically study these, these schematics, you know, in and out. So here we have it, the user interface. It's connected to the, so we're basically toggling the red LED and the red LED is connected to PT11. So on my development board, over here, uh, over here, it's connected to this pin over here. So the 11th pin on the left, one, two, three, four, five is the uh, PE uh, 11. All right, so let's look at it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my um, logic analyzer and I'm gonna basically place it literally on the fifth pin over here. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna open my logic analyzer tool and then we'll see whether the pins is toggling. All right. So I'm gonna start the session. And here you can see almost after every one second, it's going on, up and down, up and down. And that's a good start. So once we'll stop, we'll start to measure what the frequency is. Uh, 
And as you can see, it says that it's 987.01 milliseconds and the total length is 1.974 milliseconds, 1.94 seconds. So that's approximately one second. So this is the best way of calibrated our processor and the clock so that when it's blinking after every one second or so, almost one second. And that's a good start. So if you want to create your own development board, this is the uh, something minimalist thick and with least amount of components so that you can prototype your algorithms as quickly as possible and start to test your hardware in the loop or software in the loop. This is the best way to go about doing things. You can really, you can super, you can, you know, rapid prototype at, you know, at, at uh, very high speed. All right, so if you like this video, I highly recommend you to subscribe, uh, like this video, you know, put down your comments if you have any questions, if there's something wrong that I've done, or there's better ways to do certain things, you know, share, share your comments and I would love to hear from you. Um, until next time, thank you.